afternoon, everybody. Woo. I promise I'll behave, Bishop Borders. He thinks I'm trying to take his job sometimes. Folks, I am so humbled, humbled to stand here before you today. And those that know me know that I always start off this way, to thank the seniors in this room of all colors, all ethnicities, that through your struggles and strife for justice and equality for everybody in this city, you paved the way so I could be here in this capacity. So thank you. We are in the house of the Lord. Thank God first and foremost. God is good. No, my mother taught me that one too. <laughs> my next thank you is to a young man, I can call him a young man because he's younger than me, that I met in Dorchester way back in the day. A child of Dorchester, also raised by the community. And you want to talk about that word transparency that you often hear expressed by police officials. This is a transparent man. He had trials and tribulations, but he shared them. He overcame them to work as a state representative and then come back home to be the mayor of the city of Boston. Martin J. Walsh. Oh, yeah, stands in awe. He deserves it. <laughs> Tell you what, talking about another child of the community, that's what resonates in this city today, that our leaders, and everyone you see here before you, we really do care about the community. Um, Mayor, thank you so much for having the confidence in me to lead this police department and our model of community policing. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, because, um, Mom, it all came from you and God. Thank you. We'll keep on our theme of community. As I mentioned, my older brother, uh, William B. Evans, 38 years committed, working a kid from Southie, a kid from Dorchester, and a kid from Dorchester, all be a part of here to help lead the city together, not walking ahead, but walking together. I followed his career, and we had a chance to work together for the last four and a half years, right? Bringing the whole city together. We never went home. We talked late at night, early in the morning. Okay, you early in the morning, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, oftentimes, we knew that people were looking at us. Southie, Dorchester, forced busing in the days of yore. How are these two gonna get together? How are they going to work it out? And we always had our favorite joke, with, uh, what I'm gonna which I'm going to share with you right now, when I always said, I'm trying to get him to eat, he's trying to get me to run. <laughs> <laughs> but it gets better. When in his cool DJ voice, he says, yeah, and when we go down the street, we look like the number 10. <laughs> But not only did he have a great sense of humor, but a great sense of leadership. Great pride we have in this city. We've repelled two terrorist attacks. We've gone on to become stronger. And it's because of forward-thinking leaders and strong community and sense of community. So I thank you for having the confidence in me to help guide me to the next level. And I will have you on speed dial, just saying. <laughs> Thank you.
We were guided as well. Again, first by God and by family. But we had forward-thinking leadership in the police department. There were administrators before us, commissioners before us. What's this time? I'd like to thank the former commissioners. I had the pleasure of working for all of you and with you. Pretty cool to have Evans and Evans as police commissioners, right? I, I want to see them at Thanksgiving going at it. <laughs> but again, we're talking about the history of the Boston Police Department. And anything negative we learn from it, those are teachable moments. But we had men and women that were visionaries to move us to the next step. So that one day, it doesn't matter where you're at from the city, we can call you police commissioner. It's because of forward-thinking leaders. Commissioner Evans, Commissioner Evans, Commissioner O'Toole, and Commissioner Ed Davis, who brought me aboard the command staff 10 years ago. I remember when he brought me up to headquarters, and I'm like, what am I here for? And we had a great discussion. And he says, hey, I want you to be who you are, and we know you're a person of the community, and he let me be me. And, Sir, I appreciate that you brought me on the command staff, and here I am 10 years later because of all of you and all of you. Thank you. Boston's unique. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts is unique. Our great elected official, state, local, federal. This country began here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We are the shining examples. And these leaders, one thing you have, thank you, my brother. <laughs> one thing we have is our elected officials really do care about the constituency as if they are family. I applaud you all seated here before us. Thank you. If you want to look at a forward-thinking city, look at our city council, how diversified, how qualified. They know that Boston, again, is a leader. And your representation for the entire city is unwavering, and we appreciate you. And I look forward to working with all of the elected officials as we go forward together. Sometimes it's not always a love fest, but it's always a respect fest. So thank you. All right, Mom, you know it was coming. My mother. No, nope, I'm taking my time. She's like, time out, don't talk about me. Yeah. Woo! Y'all don't know the life story. Of the trials and tribulations she had as a young woman in Baltimore. She had a rough life, but eventually was raised by, raised by her aunt and uncle, Aunt Ben. Excuse me, not Aunt Ben. Anything's possible these days. But anyway, <laughs> Uncle Ben, Aunt Helen who instilled in her family, 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 and, um, wow, she raised us. We found ourselves in this city. They were before me, my mother, my sister, Pinky, because she hates the name Waltine, and my sister, Davida. Found ourselves on Esmond Street in 1975 during the racially tumultuous times of forced busing. But here I am, the country mouse that became a city mouse. Yes, I know. You hear that laughing? That's because I used to say things like hot dog and all this stuff. But people helped my mother, and I'm gratefully appreciative of the community, from Vietnam vets to Nosy Miss Parker <laughs> to my football coaches, Harry and Dennis Wilson, Raiders for life, and just the people from the community that throughout my years, from being 12 years old to 18, were right there every step in the way of the way. A tough community, but a community of love and compassion. And I'd like to thank my mother, Deanna, for being there, not only for me, 
but for everybody in our neighborhood. And she being a child of God, she brought forth the love to entire communities. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Look around the room. We all have family here, but it begins with women, those that give birth and life to the earth. It's because of you, Mom, that your children have children, and you have grandchildren and great-grandchildren. At this time, I'd like all of them to stand up and be recognized and recognize your grandmother and great-grandmother. That guy that looks like me is my son, William. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Have a seat. Thank you. All right, now. We're just so lucky that in Boston that we have engaging communities that not only take care of their blood relatives, but others as well. What I'm proud of about our Boston community and our community policing model is this. It is made up of all of us. Often we hear the word community policing. It's just thrown out. What does it mean? Sometimes it becomes jaded. But I'm telling you here in Boston and here in the Commonwealth, here's what it means to work collaboratively, police department, the community, the private sector, the businessmen, all right? institutions of higher learning, our great clergy, and everybody in the village. That's what our model means, and that's what we will keep going together. As the four stated, we are in the house of God. Throughout history, People have been led by clergy. And again, in Boston, our clergy is strong from every denomination. They are here in the best of times, in our most difficult times. They are here for guidance and wisdom. And even the tough ones like Father Conway will throw you a shot every now and then. <laughs> but it's all out of love. I'd like to thank the clergy in the city of Boston and across our commonwealth for being the leaders of our hearts and souls and keeping us on the right path. Thank you. Justice for Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I am a product of the community that helped me become a Boston police cadet in 1983. Lessons learned. I remember I went in, I'm like, ah, oh, man, I'm gonna, oof, I'm gonna be in for it. But I want to do what I wanna do. If you want change, be the change. And because of this lady, I have a strong sense of his, his, excuse me, history and a foundation where it says that all people help create this country. Thank you again, my brother. He's my backup. All people help create this nation. All people help create this nation. We don't care who doesn't like Boston. We will never have law. Um, we'll never have walls. We'll be all inclusive. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But we said a lot about Boston, Boston, Boston. I am a part of a law enforcement family, state, local, and federal. My brothers and sisters are here today. I celebrate them. When I was a new chief, they welcomed me with open arms. We have members of the Massachusetts major city chiefs, my brothers. And I want you all to know the success that we have here in Boston 
is shared with my brothers and sisters. The success that they have in their cities and towns is also shared here with Boston. We understand what's going on across our great nation. We pledge to protect the Commonwealth and to move forward and work with the citizens of the Commonwealth. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you, my sisters, for being here. All right, now it's bragging rights time. The Boston Police Department is the first police department in our great nation, starting in 1630 and became fully incorporated in 1854. We are, prou we are proud of the fact that we are the first in the nation, and we understand our duties and responsibilities, not only to the city, but to the Commonwealth. It's this time, at this time, I'd like to celebrate the men and women of the Boston Police Department. From our command staff, to the civilians, to the men and women that work the streets. It is I who salute them. my class of 1485 thank you thank you you know folks it's, it's a tough job it's a tough job it's a tough job we understand sometimes there's a lot of anti-police sentiment and we know why in Boston we don't deny things we acknowledge them and we learn from them so we don't emulate things that are happening outside of the Commonwealth with that being said I'd be remiss if I did not thank the families of, of Boston police officers and all law enforcement officers. When we're grumpy and tired, it's our families that are here that have our backs. Thank you. Stand up. Sometimes these folks go unnoticed. Our, our civilians are our backbone for the BPD. They're our backbone. Who takes the radio calls when they hear about senseless death? There's someone that you call that's on that phone that's just as affected as we are. So thank, thank, thank you to our civilians that have our back on this police department. Thank you. <laughs> there are some special ladies that work with us on the fourth floor. Laura Dickerson, Nakisha Gales, <laughs> Kathy Kearney, Dana McGuire. I don't know where Joyce is. I hope she's here somewhere. Hi, Joyce. They all take care of us. And trust me, we're grumpy. Sometimes we're happy. But they take care of us. Now I want to talk about Again, law enforcement family. And thank you, Marilyn, for putting up with me. I'm such a treasure. <laughs> <laughs> the other part of law enforcement family that really touches my heart are the hardworking men and women that have paid the ultimate sacrifice. They've done their job. They deserve to go home safely after each tour of duty. But unfortunately, it's a battle between good and evil. And although the bad think they have won when they have taken our brothers and sisters too early, they will never take their spirit. They will never take the spirit of Officer Tarantino. They will never take the spirit of Officer Gannett. And they will never take the spirit of Officer Chestnut. Because we will not let them. We are the thin blue line. And we will be here for you and their families.
And I'm telling you, it means the world to the chiefs and the families of the fallen, especially their children, who we pledge to take care of. We do not leave family behind. And thank you for the standing ovation for those who cannot stand anymore. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So in Boston, crime is down. Arrest rates are down. As the mayor alluded to earlier, we're not about putting on cuffs. We're about building and uplifting and strengthening families. But that's a credit to all of our collaborative work, right? When we help families, we do referrals. And I can honestly say, Mayor, we have a lot of people working hard to ensure that same opportunities. We can't say that about Boston in the 50s, but we can say we're well ahead of the game now, but we still have work to do. And we recognize that. We want every child in every part of this city to feel welcome to put on the uniform, whether it's Boston Police, Suffolk County Sheriff's, State Police, or any police department across the Commonwealth. We want you to feel welcome. We have a vision for you, and that we know that you are our future leaders, and that this police department, as well as the police departments across the Commonwealth, are all about diversity and inclusion. Again, we have work to do. But one day, everybody will feel confident. But until then, we won't waver or we won't grow tired of educating people about how we do things. You know, we're in 21st century policing. And what does that mean? All that means is we've learned from lessons past and we've come forward with open arms of empathy, sympathy, care, and respect. As I take this role as a police commissioner, I have a vision as well. And I have four things written down, four goals, and they're very important to me. Number one is to enhance community policing efforts. We've already shown it, folks. We're going to work together, and we're going to strengthen our models. And any strategies that we have, we're going to strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. You've already heard me define community policing. So that means all of this. So let's have some patience, too. Let's be able to uh, accept constructive criticism. Let's celebrate. You know, when we talk about positive stats, it's not just BPD. It's the communities that helped us. It's everybody in the city. That's a celebration. So when we have bad stats or negative, all that means is we have a little more work to do. But we've already laid the foundation and we'll go forward together. <laughs> Number two, articulate a plan for diversity that includes all of Boston, everybody. No walls. And to be transparent, it should not be a mystery about how we serve you. And that's right, folks. We serve you. Right. It's not a mystery. It shouldn't be a mystery. So we will share our programs and our initiatives because we know under the spirit of community policing, you're going to be right there with us anyway. It's your model, too. Number three, kind of already hit it, maintain transparency. Again, should not be a mystery. And we expect your input and we welcome it. This isn't the warrior class anymore. We wear many different hats as law enforcement. Mothers, fathers, doctors, lawyers, plumbers. Yes, we get called the floods and everything. <laughs> we wear many different hats and we welcome that. And I vow that the Boston Police Department will move forward. The men and women you see here with us through training, through education, and through listening to the community. Number four, dear to my heart, as I just alluded to earlier about our fallen officers, folks, I'm going to tell you right here and right now, first responders are not robots. Police, fire, EMS, we are not robots. Right, Brother Finn? 
We are not robots. It's a tough job. It affects us. It's a tough job. We think about it, whether we're at work or not. So officer wellness is at the, one of the main focal points. If we, if we are sound in body and mind, then we can best serve you. I want us to be able to say hi to each other as we walk down the street, have discussions. That really, really touches our heart when someone comes up and like, hey, I know a lot's going on, but thank you, you did a good job. So I love my brothers and sisters in law enforcement. I announce it publicly. I'm not ashamed of it. I will never hide from it. But I'm telling you, under our administration, as all of these commissioners before we did, we are going to concentrate on officer wellness so they can be the best officers that they can be, again, to serve you. And again, I work hand in hand with the command staff. Why do I point them out? Because if your vision is not accepted from the top, it will never reach the workers in the field. The ones we love that are answering the radio calls, it has to start from the top on down, All right? We are gonna be more inclusive. We are gonna diversify, and that's gonna be with your help. I just ask one thing, in the diversity of police departments, we have out the welcoming mat. We want the community to do the same. When people aspire to be first responders, don't look outside of the Commonwealth about all the negativity or the negative things that have happened in the past because those are teachable moments again. Let's let our young men and women of all communities of Boston that if they want to, let them be the change. They need both welcome mats from the police department and the community for us to move forward. You know, in 1983, as a Boston police cadet, if you ever told me I'd be here right now, I'd be like, no way. Not a glass ceiling, but a brick ceiling. But again, it is real. <laughs> again, look how far we've become, at what we've become. Look how far we've come, rather, and what we have become. More understanding of every culture. More understanding about what's going on in life and how we need to move forward. And it's this, it's this point that we must realize that everybody has a mission statement. What we're doing now, what we're about, but what I'm confident about the city of Boston through its leadership is that we have a vision. We know where we wanna be. And the youth that are in here today, and I know you're here. I love the youth of the community. Go on, sign, sound off. I see teen empowerment. I know the Dorchester Wise here. You are not alone. From the seniors that have paved the way for us, to the people here before you, our vision includes you. You're the future leaders. This is why we do what we do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We will listen to your voice too, but we're gonna be on your case to make sure that you're the future leaders that we are gonna love and admire. Last of the notes. <laughs> Again, folks, look how far we've become. And notice, I say we. We the people of the city of Boston. We the people of the Commonwealth. I love bragging about the Commonwealth. All right? From everybody in this community, even the professional sports teams that makes the rest of the nation hate us. Isn't that right, Mr. Henry? <laughs> and Mrs. Henry of the Red Sox, the Celtics, the Bruins, the Red Sox, the Patriots. I'm going to tell you right now, they do give back to the community. This is what makes the Commonwealth strong, all of us here together. 
I love looking out and seeing all the smiling faces. I love that this is growing out across the nation. I hope that we can all learn from each other. I hope that we can all move forward together. I am fully expecting us to do so. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless the city of Boston. God bless the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you.